Hello everyone. Uh, we move to the next module that is non-uniform flow in channels. Kindly recall in module 2 we discussed about uniform flow in channels. So how we define this uniform flow? So we define this uniform flow as the type of flow in which the various physical parameters such as the depth of flow, velocity, density, temperature and pressure do not change from point to point all along the reach, then we call the type of flow as uniform flow. Now, if these parameters, physical parameters, change from point to point along the reach, then the flow is said to be non-uniform flow. So that is the topic which you are going to study in this module. <clears throat> what are the objectives of uh, this module? The objectives of this module is to make the students to learn energy concepts of fluid in open channel, energy dissipation, water surface profiles at different conditions. What are the topics you are going to study in this module? As I mentioned earlier, so non-uniform flow. So non-uniform flow, you are going to study two types of flows. One is gradually varied flow, the other one is rapidly varied flow. So under uh, rapidly varied flow, you are going to study this hydraulic jump, expressions for conjugate depths and energy loss. Finally, you have numerical problems uh, in rapidly varied flow. Under gradually varied flow, so we are going to study the basic equation or the dynamic equation for GVF, gradually varied flow, backwater curve and a flux, description of water curves or profiles. So we are going to study mild, steep, critical, horizontal and adverse slope profiles. And finally, we are going to solve couple of numerical problems on identifying the flow profiles. So these are the uh, topics we are going to study in module 3. With this, let us start uh, first gradually varied flow. So first I will finish up this gradually varied flow, then I will come to rapidly varied flow. As I mentioned at the beginning of this topic, so I said the various physical parameters such as depth, velocity, density, temperature and pressure varies from section to section along the reach, then the flow is said to be non-uniform flow. So varied flow can be further classified into gradually varied flow. So in short, it is represented as GVF or rapidly varied flow or R V E F. Now, such situations occur when control structures are used in the channel, when any obstruction is found in the channel, and finally, when a sharp change in the channel slope takes place. These are a couple of situations where you are going to see a gradually varied flow or a rapidly varied flow situation. So let us first uh, see what is the difference between gradual varied flow and rapidly varied flow. Now, to differentiate between gradual varied flow and rapidly varied flow, so here I consider a river. Okay. Now, this is the obstruction constructed across the river or the stream. Now, before constructing the obstruction or the uh, obstruction. So this is the level of water in the stream or the river. The, the red dotted line what I am showing here is the depth of water in the river or the stream before constructing this obstruction. So that depth of water I represented it as Y1. Now so this is the obstruction we constructed across this stream. The moment once you construct this obstruction, okay, 
the height of the substruction is greater than y1 the depth of water flowing in the stream so what happens so at this point this flowing water it starts rising because this acts as an obstruction so once the water level rises above this obstruction the excess water starts flowing over the obstruction now kindly concentrate on this figure here i show two sections section 11 and section 22 section 11 is the point where the depth of flow is equal to y1 and section 22 is near the obstruction so at the obstruction the depth of flow i represented as y2 if you look at this figure so y2 is much 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 greater than y1 okay now so this the profile what you are seeing from section 2 to to section 1 is called gradually varied flow profile so you i mentioned the distance between section 1 1 and section 2 2 uh, by x so when i'm talking about gradually varied flow the distance between section 1 1 and section 2 2 is quite large so over this large distance you have the change of depth happening from y1 to y2 so this type of flow is known as gradually varied flow now another important point now this y2 the new depth at the obstruction and the original depth y1 this y2 minus y1 is called the afflux that is what i showed here okay so this may be a tan or this may be a wear okay so y2 minus y1 is called the afflux this is about the gradually varied flow uh, profile now come to this rapidly varied flow now you go to any dam on the downstream side of the dam you are going to see a profile like this whenever uh, uh, the dam authorities release water whenever the dam authorities release water you are going to see a profile like this on the downstream side now i'll i'll show you one more picture now if you look at this this is our narendpur dam now this is the initial depth y1 so within a very short reach so again here i showed another section section 22 and again section 11 and section 22 is separated by a distance x so the depth y1 changes to a higher depth y2 within a very short reach so this type of flow is known as rapidly varied flow this is a difference between gradually varied flow and rapidly varied flow as the name suggests in case of a gradually varied flow the depth changes over a very long distance and in case of a rapidly varied flow the depth changes within a very short uh, distance so that type of flow is known as rapidly varied flow with this knowing the difference between gradually varied flow and rapidly varied flow uh, so let us start with uh, the let us start the equation for this gradually varied flow so to get the relationship between water surface flow and other characteristics of flow the following assumptions are made in the derivation of this dynamic equation of gradually varied flow so what are the assumptions made the first assumption is flow is steady 
So when you say the flow is steady or a steady flow, if the various physical parameters such as the depth, velocity, density, temperature, pressure, if these various physical parameters, if they do not change with respect to time, we call the type of flow as a steady flow. If these physical parameters change with time, we call the type of flow as unsteady flow. So the first assumption we make in deriving the equation for gradually varied flow, we assume that the flow is steady. The second one is the streamlines are parallel to each other and hence the hydrostatic distribution of pressure at both ends of the control volume is assumed to be sa same over the entire section. Third one, the loss of head at any section due to friction is equal to that in the corresponding uniform flow. In other words, we make use of the uniform flow formula. We know that there are two formulae for uniform flow. One is Chase's formula, the other one is Manning's formula. Now, this Chase's formula and Manning's formula are used to find the energy slope. Fourth one, the slope of the channel is assumed to be very small. Fifth one, the channel is prismatic. When I, when I say channel is prismatic, the water surface slope is parallel to the bed slope. Coming to the sixth one, the velocity distribution across the section is fixed. And finally, the seventh one, roughness coefficient is constant in the reach or between the two sections which we considered for deriving the equation. These are the assumptions we made in deriving this equation. With these assumptions, let us see how to derive the equation. Now, in order to derive this GPF or gradually varied flow equation, so consider a channel carrying a fluid. So in this channel, consider two sections, section 1, 1, section 2, 2. And these two sections are separated by a distance dx. Now, this line represents the datum. Datum is an arbitrary line with respect to which we are going to measure the total energy. Now, what is the total energy at section 1? Potential energy plus pressure energy plus kinetic energy. That is Z1 plus P1 by gamma plus V1 square by 2G. So, in case of open channel, I told earlier, this P1 by gamma is nothing but the depth of water at section 1, 1. Therefore, the total energy at section 1 is given by so Z1 plus Y1 plus V1 square by 2G. Now, at section 2, 2, the total energy is given by Z2 plus Y2 plus V2 square by 2G and we need to add this last, this we call it as what is known as HL. Okay, that is for a real fluid. Now, in general, the total energy or total head at any point is given by, so capital H, capital H represents the total head, total head is equal to the datum head that is given by Z plus the pressure head that is given by Y plus the kinetic head V square by 2G. This is the general equation. So call this equation as 1. Now, you need to be careful. So when you are talking about this, uh, when you are writing the figure, so this in this figure, I consider the 
I, I consider the channel bottom. I consider the channel bottom, okay, has the x-axis. This is very, very important. Now, the next point is taking x-axis along the bed of the channel. Now, differentiate this equation 1. That is capital H is equal to Z plus Y plus V square by 2G with respect to this X direction. When you do that, you are going to get DH by DX that is equal to DZ by DX plus DY by DX plus D by DX of V square by 2G. Okay, so call this as equation number 2. Now, what is dh by dx? dh is the total head. So, you are differentiating total head with respect to x. That is nothing but the slope of the energy line. That is represented as SF. Similarly, this dz by dx is the bed slope that is represented as S0. Now, if you observe this figure carefully, now, as the x increases, as x increases, the value of z1, for example, if you look at this, the height of z1 here and the z height of z2 here, so as the value of x increases, the value of z goes on decreasing. So similarly, even this, uh, you know, total height corresponding to this uh, h, so it goes on decreasing. So with that, so what right now I am going to do is, so I am going to write this the energy slope SF with a negative sign and the bed slope dz by dx is equal to S0 with a negative sign. Okay, therefore this becomes, so please concentrate on this equation, minus SF is equal to minus S0 plus dy by dx plus d by dx of v square by 2g. Now, why negative sign? That I will that explain in the Next slide. Now look at this. Negative sign for SF and S0 indicate that as X increases, the value of H and Z decreases. This sentence is very, very important. Otherwise, if you put minus, so it doesn't make sense. Okay. Now, multiplying the velocity term, multiplying the velocity term, that is V square by 2G, by dy by dy, so if you if you if you simplify this, you are going to get one, and transposing, we are going to get, okay, S not minus S F is equal to dy by dx into d by dx of v square by two g. I repeat once again, negative sign for S F and S not indicate that as x increases, h and z decreases. First point. Then multiplying the velocity term by dy by dy. If you simplify that, dy by dy gets cancelled, you are going to get 1. And transposing, we get S0 minus SF is equal to dy by dx plus d by dx of v square by 2g. Now, dy by dx into 1 plus d by dy of v square by 2g that is equal to s0 minus sf. Okay. Now I want the value of dy, dy by dx. So dy by dx is equal to s0 minus sf divided by 1 plus d by dy of v square by 2g. Okay. Now, this equation is known as the dynamic equation of gradually varied flow. Very simple uh, derivation. So, only thing is you need to remember the uh, figure, what I mentioned, and you need to write the general uh, total head equation, differentiate that with respect to x, and on simplification, you are going to get the value of dy by dx. So, this dynamic equation gives the variation of depth 
with respect to the distance along the bottom of the channel. Kindly recall, we differentiated that equation h is equal to z plus y plus v square by 2g with respect to x. The equation what we derived just now, it gives the variation of depth with respect to the distance along the bottom of the channel. This is about the dynamic equation of GVF. Now we are going to see different forms of the GVF. Let us see what are the different forms of GVF. Dynamic equation can be expressed in terms of discharge. So dy by dx is equal to S0 minus SF divided by 1 minus Q square T divided by GAQ. This is another form. Dynamic equation can also be expressed in terms of specific energy. Okay. So therefore, this dy by dx is equal to dE by dx divided by 1 minus Q square T divided by GAQ. So you have three equations for this gradually varied flow. So one is dy by dx is equal to S0 minus SF divided by 1 plus d by dy of v square by 2g. The second one is dy by dx is equal to S0 minus SF divided by 1 minus q square t divided by ga cube. And the third one is dy by dx is equal to dE by dx divided by 1 minus q square t divided by g a q. So this is about the derivation of this g v f equation. Now, depending on the value of dy by dx, so dy by dx may be 0, dy by dx may be positive, dy by dx may be negative. Now, that is what I mentioned in this table. Depending on the type of flow, dy by dx may take the following values. First one, dy by dx is equal to 0. So what do you mean by this? The slope of the water surface is equal to bottom slope. The slope of the water surface is equal to the bottom slope. In other words, the water surface is parallel to the bottom slope or the channel bed. So when this is going to happen, so this will happen when the flow is said to be uniform. I repeat, for a uniform flow, the channel bed is parallel to the water surface profile. For that case, this dy by dx is equal to 0. Coming to the second case, dy by dx is positive. So when you have this dy by dx is equal to positive, the slope of water surface is less than the bottom slope. The slope of water surface is less than the bottom slope. So when you are going to encounter this scenario, the water surface rises in the direction of flow. The water surface rises in the direction of flow. The profile obtained is called backwater curve. When I am talking about backwater curve, dy by dx is equal to positive. Coming to the last case, dy by dx is equal to negative. So in this case, the slope of the water surface is greater than the bottom slope. If the slope of the water surface is greater than the bottom slope, then dy by dx is negative. So when you are going to encounter this scenario, the water surface falls in the direction of flow. The water surface falls in the direction of flow. The profile obtained is called draw down curve. So if dy by dx is positive, we have a backwater curve. 
if divided by dx is negative, it is called a drawdown curve. So with this, let us move forward. Classification of channel bed slopes. The slope of the channel bed is very important in determining the characteristics of flow. So for that, let us define S0, the slope of the channel bed, SC, the critical slope, R, the slope of the channel that sustains a given discharge as uniform flow at the critical depth. Let us read SC once again. SC, the critical slope, R, the slope of the channel that sustains a given discharge Q has uniform flow at the critical depth. Then we define this Yn. Yn is the normal depth when the discharge Q flows as uniform flow on slope S0. So with this, let us define the different types of bed slopes. There are five types of bed slopes. One is critical slope. The second one is mild slope. The third one is steep slope. And the fourth one is horizontal slope. And finally, you have this adverse slope. So critical slope, mild slope, steep slope, horizontal slope, and adverse slope. The next question is, how do I differentiate between critical slope, mild slope, mild slope, steep slope, steep slope, horizontal slope, horizontal slope, or adverse slope. Let us see the characteristics for this critical slope. Critical slope is represented by capital C. So for critical slope, the bottom slope of the channel is equal to the critical slope. So in that case, for this case, the bed slope S0 is equal to the critical slope that is given by SC. When the bed slope is critical, the condition is now the depth of flow is equal to normal depth and that is nothing but the critical depth. So I repeat once again, for critical slope, bed slope is equal to critical slope and normal depth of flow is equal to the critical depth. Come to the second uh, type of slope, that is mild slope. Mild slope is represented by capital M. Now for this, the bottom slope of the channel is less than the critical slope. So S0 is less than SC. And in this case, the normal depth is more than the critical depth. Let us repeat once again. For mild slope, the bed slope is less than the critical slope and the normal depth is greater than the critical depth. Now coming to the third type of slope, that is steep slope, that is given by capital S. So in this case, the bottom slope of the channel is greater than the critical slope. So S0 greater than SC. And Yn is less than Yc. Now, if you observe mild slope and steep slope, they are just opposite. So for mild slope, your bed slope is less than the critical slope. For steep slope, the bed slope is greater than the critical slope. In case of mild slope, the normal depth is greater than the critical depth. And in case of steep slope, so normal depth is less than the critical depth. The next one, horizontal slope. So when we call this slope as horizontal, the bottom slope of the channel is zero. That is, when S0 is equal to zero, we call the type of slope as horizontal slope. And this horizontal slope is represented by capital H. Coming to the last one, adverse slope, and that is given by capital A. 
Now, in this case, the bottom slope of the channel rises in the direction of flow. The bottom slope of the channel rises in the direction of flow. Slope is opposite to the direction of flow. What do you mean by this? In this case, the bed slope is negative. So, if the bed slope is negative, we call the type of flow as adverse slope. So, critical slope, mild slope, steep slope, horizontal slope and adverse slope. Let us see how it looks like in a real situation. So, first one, mild slope. Okay. So, bed slope is less than a critical slope. Come to the steep slope. Bed slope is greater than a critical slope. Now, critical slope, bed slope is equal to critical slope, horizontal slope. So, bed slope is equal to, there is a type over here, uh, bed slope is equal to 0. And in case of adverse slope, bed slope is negative. These are the different types of bed slopes we are going to find in nature. So, we will take one by one. And with respect to this, we are going to study the water surface profiles.